watching Beyond Market. Welcome, I'm Kenneth Igbomo and thanks so much for joining me on the show today. In the, in the first half of the show, we'll explore how the United Kingdom plans to consolidate trade ties with Nigeria post-Brexit. And later on, CNBC's Middle East correspondent Dan Murphy shared the spotlight on Dubai's rising startup ecosystem. You can join the conversation on social media and let me know what you think about the topics we discuss. And to do so, use the hashtag Beyond Markets on Twitter and also send me a message on my handle, that's at Kenneth Ibomo. Now, Nigeria and UK investors signed commercial deals worth £324 million at the just-concluded UK-Africa Investment Summit. As Britain finally exits the European Union, the British Deputy High Commissioner in Lagos, Harriet Thompson, joined me to discuss ways the UK plans to consolidate its ties with Nigeria. Well, you've just mentioned the enormous sum of commercial deals that were signed with Nigeria uh, in the run-up to the summit. Actually, on the day itself, another £40 million at least signed with Nigeria. So that's a really key aspect for it. Nigeria was out in force at the summit. The president led the delegation. Um, one in seven of the African businesses present were from Nigeria. Um, we had speakers ranging from Tony, Lum Tony Illumilu at one end through to the startups like Trep Labs, like Social Lender. Um, so huge prominence given to Nigeria at the summit. Uh, as well as the commercial deals, we announced new government spending in Nigeria in areas such as investment promotion, um, strengthening the finance sector, accelerating the transition to clean energy, supporting women and entrepreneurs particularly. So a huge, a huge amount came out of it, but we still have an awful lot of, to follow up on uh, after a lot of positive conversations. Yeah, a lot, a lot to still follow up on, as you rightly said. But then I'd like to look specifically at some of the things that, that kind of played out from there. I'm talking about the engagement between the, the British, British investors and the Nigerian delegation, I'd like to know how frank the conversations were. So they were honest, right? And we saw, we were encouraged to see a lot of interest from British companies in doing business here in Nigeria. So through the summit itself, but satellite events and follow-up meetings, particularly around agriculture, around infrastructure, around technology, mining, all of these areas that have got huge potential to really boost Nigeria's acceleration. Um, economic growth to create the jobs that Nigeria needs, but where there are win-win opportunities for the UK commercial sector and Nigeria's commercial sector. We need to turn those positive conversations now into the concrete deals. And there we need realism on those conditions that hold British companies back from coming to Nigeria in more significant numbers, but at the same time maximise that great potential that they see here. Yeah, right, right you mentioned that because I'd like to get into that investment guide that was launched between the NIPC and the, the UK's DFID and I'd like to understand how that came about. Yeah, so we've been working with the NIPC for a long time now. It's a, it's a relationship that we hugely value uh, and we work together supporting NIPC to produce this investment promotion guide for the first time. Now our collaboration with NIPC and with other such agencies in the Nigerian government will carry on and particularly we are launching, we launched at the summit, a new investment promotion programme that will see £10 million over three years go to only Nigeria and South Africa with the aim of increasing in investments into Nigeria by 25 million over that period. It's good to see the UK government engaging the government of Nigeria and the private sector, but then at the end, at the heart of everything is, you know, political will is also very important. Uh, and it was good to see the picture there with uh, uh, the UK, uh, UK Prime Minister and President Buhari. I'd like to know what, what played out in their conversations. So President Buhari was actually the only head of state and government to meet with both the Prime Minister and the Prince of Wales in his visit to London. So we're very pleased about that, of course. Now, the conversation with the Prime Minister was wide ranging. Of course, it picked up on the areas of economic and commercial collaboration that we've just touched on, but it also covered areas around security, uh, around the fight against corruption and so on. Particularly they talked about the prospects for agriculture, both of, in order to accelerate Nigeria's economic growth, also to create the jobs that Nigeria needs, but also with that focus on sustainability as well. And as the UK heads towards its hosting of the Conference of the Parties on Climate Change at the end of this year, sustainability is a key angle for us. So we're very conscious, as is President Buhari, as we look to boost that sector to make sure we do it in an environmentally sustainable way. Yeah, right, you mentioned that. But then also something very critical in all of this is, you know, how the UK is positioning ahead of Brexit. We know tomorrow is D-Day as, as we've all been waiting for. And then I'm trying to understand how the UK is seeing Nigeria in this, in this new, new, new walk it's, it's taking. 
Yeah, exactly. So the start of a new era for us tomorrow. Uh, and I think the timing of the UK-Africa Investment Summit just a couple of weeks ago is very significant. It really demonstrates to the world, I think, mm -hmm. that as the UK leaves the EU, we're thinking again, we're thinking differently about our partnerships with countries right across the world, particularly the continent of Africa. Um, I think others have organised their own investment summits with Africa. That's a sign that people recognise right across the world how significant Africa's economic growth is going to be over the coming period and the UK wants to be right at the heart of those relationships. Nigeria being the economic giant with the size of its population and predicted population growth is obviously a key part of that so we are determined to be and remain one of Nigeria's key commercial partners. Also looking at how the capital markets also will play a role in this partnership. Well, I understand uh, there's the talks around uh, a Jalof bond coming, coming up and I'd like to know how that is coming about and you know, what, can we, what we can expect. So this is an idea that we've been discussing with the London Stock Exchange, Nigeria Stock Exchange and various parts of the federal government of Nigeria for a while now. Um, the idea is to open up investments in Nigeria to a wider range of investors. There are many British investors here already. Uh, the stock of investment from the UK to Nigeria already stands at 4.2 billion but through this offshore Naira denominated bond we think that we can bring more investors in. We had a very positive exploratory conversation with investors, with the Minister of Finance from Nigeria present, uh, with our International Development Secretary present. That demonstrated that there's clear interest from both sides but obviously a lot of technical details still to be worked through. All right, looking at uh, the UK and Nigeria, obviously we have a history of partnerships over the years. But I'm trying to understand, um, do we see new area areas being unlocked, new areas of partnership at the summit? So the summit, I think, demonstrated not only for Nigeria, but for the whole of the African continent, the UK's desire to start a, a different type of relationship with the continent, with countries on the continent. This is about forward-looking partnership. It's about mutual accountability, mutual responsibility, and also mutual interests. Boosting Nigeria's prosperity is good for Nigeria, but the UK being a part of that story is good for the UK as well. Right, because when you look at some of the areas here we, we, we on, on trade, but one key area has been education and, and, and the UK and Nigeria, we've kind of had that, that strong one because there's a lot of um, um, uh, education tourism happening in Nigeria. And I'd like to know how that is happening and also what role are you playing in technology? So the UK's relationship with Nigeria on education obviously is very close. We see huge numbers of Nigerian students going to UK institutions every year where they benefit from that world-class education. We absolutely want that to continue. As we leave the EU and have more control over our visa regime, we are looking to, again, extend the amount of time that students can stay on in the UK post-study to start their working experience as well. At the other end of the scale, perhaps, our Department for International Development puts a huge amount of money into boosting education opportunities here in Nigeria, particularly for girls, particularly in the poorest areas of Nigeria. There's also the flagship scholarship scheme, the Chevening Scholarships, where Nigeria is heavily represented amongst a highly competitive field. Each year we send um, a couple of approaching a couple of hundred uh, scholars to Nigeria, to the UK, sorry, to the world-class institutions, with the expectation that they then bring that experience back to Nigeria and benefit their country from what they've gained in the UK. Interesting you mentioned the women because I'd like to know the role the UK is playing also in trying to improve female participation in the economy here in Nigeria. Yeah, so a great example of this actually, and you mentioned tech in your last question, was the five female tech founders, as they were called, who went from Nigeria to the UK the week of the summit, experienced a program of mentoring, training, the opportunity to pitch their tech businesses to UK investors while they were there. Really brilliant to see and again the competition for places was, was fierce in Nigeria. Such high standards. We'll be building on that through the second edition of Glo Go Global this year. Applications are now open again for tech entrepreneurs to pitch their companies uh, to uh, first of all a panel here in Nigeria and then the winners will go to the UK and experience a similar program of training, mentorship, the opportunity to grow their business skills as well as their tech skills. Thank <laughs> you.